God calling. Really? Where? Where? <laughs> right here. I know he's calling me, or I'm calling him. Sometime I'll tell you the story about God calling. <laughs> it's an interesting one. It's in my testimony. But today, do not rush. Learn in the little daily things of life to delay action until you get my guidance. So many lives lack poise. For in the momentous decisions and the big things of life, they ask my help, but not into the little things, because in the small things they rush all along. But what you do in the small things, those around you are most often antagonized or attracted by. Do not rush. <laughs> I could be very, very guilty of that. Because I am. <laughs> I have, even in these emotionals, my own little schedule that I, I like to try to do. And so far, I don't think there's been a day that has gone what anyone would consider as dogmatic, meaning that at this certain time, this happened, and this certain time, this happened, and this went to this, to this. It's more like, all of these things are working together <laughs> in a very gestalt kind of way and they're kind of like out there and then they kind of like go boom and by the end of the time of the day is done all of them have come together and it just goes Woof, and it comes out just right <laughs> regardless of when or what happened along the way or when they finally got done and I'm always amazed because it's like never boring. <laughs> I'm never nervous about it, you know. And I think that, you know, in starting your day right, that really God wants to inspire us in recognizing that we should be taking every moment of our day with us to God in conversation. We we use this word prayer so often and we think of it as being such a long distance con you know, throw up and pray out and wait and see and hope and agonize over whether God heard us. Oh, please, Lord. Or that, you know, we have this wild idea that it can't be direct communication. You know, and if you read carefully back in Scripture, you find that there is direct communication listed in not just the Old Testament, but in the New. That God does talk to and talk with his people you're his people he does have a mouth that he can speak he does have ears that he can hear he does have criteria he says that we need to obey but we've been given grace so there's no reason why we can't directly every day walk with God and share with him everything that's going on in our day in the little things because in tripping people up, as the devotional mentioned, it could be some little thought or some little snide remark. <laughs> Although I don't think a little snide remark is so little or that it's not uh, purposely designed, but in some little inadvertent comment or some smile that you looked at the wrong time or who knows what. But God seems to emphasize that those are the times that we should be mindful of what does the Lord say? You know, could we not have anticipated that and asked him, Lord, you know, show me in some way if there's anyone I've offended or if there's anyone I need to talk to or someone I can care for or someone I can share with or someone or something that I could participate in having a cup of coffee and relaxing and talking about God. I know for myself, <laughs> I believe with all my heart that God gave me evotional, this ministry, simply because I can't find people who want to talk about God. You know, they like to talk about Him in certain times of the day. You know, like Sunday, <laughs> maybe a Monday or a Wednesday if it's scheduled. And for me, I 
like to talk about God every day. <laughs> I like to talk about God all the time. I like to, you know, recognize that he's with me everywhere I go. I think I'm a weirdo. Uh-oh. <laughs> and because of that, I think God said, you know, Michael, we need to get you out of the way because you're messing up people. We need to stick you right there being held accountable to read all your devotionals daily. So we'll give you devotionals so those people will hold you accountable so you can make sure you get the word in. So that way you don't go making some little mistake and some little accident and tripping somebody else up. Because <laughs> you're just too happy. Oh, okay. And you just know too much. Oh, yeah, I'm so smart. But in reality, I think God loves us when we are willing to give him all aspects of our life and every time that a devotional comes up or evotional or some word from the Lord you know I keep telling people look God sees it all you know from your bowel movement to your your marriage bed as they like to say in the King James but literally your sexual thoughts you know or your your practices that you know if you're a pardon the expression you, you think that in marriage you could be a pervert. No, you can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Then you are deceiving yourself and you're leading your wife or your loved one into a way that God is not real thrilled with because he sees. And God is the third party in sexual intercourse. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> I can take you there. <laughs> but the point is, if God is everywhere with us and in us, then you need to recognize that he wants to be through us, sharing his life to us so that we could be godly in him and not ungodly in the world. So when we do, we find, wow, what an experience. <laughs> what a reality. What a possession we have of God himself in us. And I hope that sobers you in some ways, but I hope it makes you think of all the little ways that maybe you don't take God there. And maybe you might think of it now. It definitely will change your life. It does mine. <laughs> and I'm still working on it. And he's still working on me. <laughs> I know he's working with you.